The Centralia Mine Fire started burning 60 years ago. Although the fire no longer burns under the actual town, it's still burning today. And in this video, I think we found some more evidence showing where the fire is burning and the direction it's heading. If you'd like to see what we found, continue watching and come along with me. Sixty years ago, the Centralia Mine Fire started burning. Although it's no longer burning underneath the town itself, it is still burning today. Several years ago, we found this location, steam vents off Big Mine Run Road, which confirms the mine fire has moved on. Actually, we returned to the spot recently, within the last two years, to do a cooking video where we cooked beans and hot dogs inside this vent. Since that time, our good friend Adam Tereska, who's very knowledgeable about Centralia told us that he thinks there's more evidence higher up of the mine fire still burning. So today we're going to be traversing this mountainside to see what other kind of evidence we could find. Well, since we're here, I figured why not get some readings with my temperature gun. In the past we have captured readings anywhere between 125 and all the way up to 200 degrees. So let's see what it's at today. <laughs> okay, so shooting into the hole there we're showing 118 degrees. If the fire is moving away, which we do think it is in this area, that would make sense. It's not burning nearly as hot. But obviously these are near surface temps. Deeper you go, hotter it gets. So this is gonna be our first path. It's the least difficult and most direct, so we're gonna head up there. Now, the one thing I do want to mention, I was talking to RJ about it, who is actually here with me, is that we have some, I guess you could say doubts a little bit, that there's actually more evidence up top. So when I say that, it's because Adam, our friend, I trust his word. He knows what he's talking about when it comes to this town and things related to the town. So I don't doubt his word that there's reportedly more evidence up on top. What I do doubt is that when it comes to mine fires, typically the lower you go is the more signs that you'll find that the fire is burning closer to the mines themselves. Or in this case, we're going higher. Now, the only exception is if the coal vein that's following or burning is actually rising in elevation. If that's the case, then it would make sense that we might find more evidence up on top. I truly don't know what we're going to find today, but part of the adventure is just seeing what we discover along the way. So with that being said, Let's head up top. Those of you watching, don't worry. I'll get you up there. You just sit back and relax. All right, so we made it up top. There's a plateau area. It resembles an old roll. It's my first day talking. Give me a break. So we made it up into a plateau it does resemble an old road and there is a vent up here also known as a fissure which you can see is forming along here and this one is kind of deep and dark and steamy <laughs> all right so this one is reading 122.5 just a few degrees hotter Actually, 123 we peaked out at. So this one's kind of vertical. And again, 
if you were to dig down, get closer to the source, you'd easily see over 200 degrees. Now, this is something we've come across before, and there's actually multiples of these. These are borehole pipes that go down to where the fire is burning to monitor the fire itself. You see there is a wire coming out. You'd hook up a device to read the temperatures and the gases and everything. So we're gonna come across probably a few of these throughout, but the ones in Centralia themselves used to spew steam and heat. They're much wider in diameter. These ones are more or less just for the readings themselves. And this one is number three. We're part way up the mountain right now and just taking a break because it's actually really warm out. It's near 60 degrees here just before New Year's. But I wanted to mention something because recently on my channel I uploaded a video where we made mention of Centralia, the mine fire itself. And the video I released was about the Laurel Run mine fire that started back in 1915. Now that video has nearly 70,000 views and out of all the people that commented on it, less than 5% knew about the Laurel Run mine fire but nearly 100% of all the commenters know about the Centralia Mine fire. Now that fire started back in May of 1962. And since that time, the fire has moved away and out from under the town of Centralia that followed veins of coal and old coal workings. And it's actually burning south and east of the town of Centralia. And that's why we're here today. We're in the general area because we think that we're gonna find more evidence of the fire burning in this direction. And if so, we'll be able to see what it's doing to the landscape and to have a better idea as to actually which direction it's heading. So once we finish our little siesta here, we're going to continue up the mountain. So as we were sitting down and taking our break, RJ looked up and spotted this. Now I don't know if this is anything at all, or just a weird coincidence, but this looks like it's partially man-made. It has some very smooth sides and clear-cut edges. It's almost like a marker of sorts. Is there? Okay. So yes, that is confirmation. This was something at one point. There's even like a little divot here. So that is a something that was created and altered by man. And just in the middle of the hillside here. As we come around the other side of this tree, we can see a flat surface right there. Looks like it's been leveled and altered. So we're gonna see if there's anything up there that maybe stood there at one time. So we're certainly on a mound of material here. You can see this one over here protruding. This is actually dug up. I'm gonna show you guys in just a second. There's a little depression here. This material was laying on the ground right here. And it looks like it's a lot of comb and waste material. I think that's what this whole area is. And it goes off flat in that direction, but it's an embankment off to the side and behind you guys. And I know it's difficult to see, but we're actually pretty high in elevation looking across as the other mountaintops. Where we started and where the road is, is way down there, several hundred yards. So here's that material, which came from right there. Someone dug it up, searching for something, whether it be coal or anything, but this was placed here semi-recently. Now, aside from the traffic noise down below, it's actually a really nice area, and these woods kind of give off Blair Witch vibes. <laughs> it's kind of a, a unique landscape. But as you can see behind me there, it does keep going up, so we're heading in that direction. And we're probably gonna, when we come back down, come down a different section, because I do know there are other pipes, and we may have even bypassed some other vents, but we are determined to reach the top, because that's where we're basically told to go, to look up there, so. Just another step along the way, but we're gonna keep climbing.
I believe we succeeded. We are essentially on top of the mountain. We've reached the summit. Now the question is, are we gonna find anything up here? All right, we're gonna have to kind of search around, see what's the best direction to go because it, it's kind of really sprawled out. And we're gonna see if we can find any clear evidence of steam or some areas where there's no nature growing at all. So RJ and myself had a little meeting here and we came up with a game plan. So what we're gonna be doing is heading in this direction. Where we started is down below there, kind of in that direction. We're gonna go across for a ways and then kind of cut over this way. It's looking kind of bleak that we're gonna find anything up here, but it doesn't mean we won't. It just may be hard to find, but at least there's two of us, two sets of eyes. And between the both of us, we usually do a pretty good job as finding things that one another may miss. After covering some ground, we came upon something, but not something we're looking for. Found a hunting stand, tree stand here. So. Nothing mine fire related. But the one thing I am liking though is this forest here is really sprawled out. We could see for quite a distance. But I don't see any evidence of fissures, steam, or bare patches of land where it's too hot to grow. But we're going to continue though and Fingers crossed, we will come upon something. So we walked clear across there. Somewhere in the distance is the tree stand. Came upon some mounds here and some discarded trash. So it is evident people have been here. Yeah. Falling apart. Looks like it sat in there. I wonder if there was yeah. insulated at one time. So you guys can drop in the comments. And we found a bucket. It was used for target practice. It's like maybe 22. As you can see, we came upon a trail. It's like an off-road trail. Over there is an embankment, which leads to believe that someone brought that mysterious item in on this trail and tossed it over there. So we got one question answered. RJ is following the trail up that way. I'm going down this way. It does kind of descend and curve to the right. So we're going to see where it may take us to. Also, the landscape has changed a bit too. So we do have a better shot of seeing evidence of the mine fire because as we look off in the distance here, it starts going down. There's more mounds of material. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's one of the old monitoring pipes, T30. So that's evident that something was taking place here back in the day, most likely related to the mine fire. So it's looking more promising down here. I think we may come across more evidence, but that is a good sign though, we're heading in the right direction. So we're gonna see if there's any more of those around, any more fissures or vents that will lead us to believe we're in the vicinity of the active underground fire. So this is a good sign, like I said, this shows that the fire was burning here at one time and it's definitely moved on. It's not an actively used pipe. There's no heat, nothing showing that the fire's burning in this area. But at one time, this was placed here for the mine fire. Now we're gonna continue on this trail because RJ is looking on the maps. This should take us to a big clear cut old workings area. And we're kind of curious to see what it looks like over there. From there, we're then gonna kind of down shoot through the forest here, make our way in the general direction of where we started with the active mine vents. Between here and there, we don't know what we'll come across, but continue watching because you never know what we'll discover along the way. Off to the left side, looks like 
some material has been dumped here. It resembles an old structure, possibly. And some glass. Some old wood and framing. The screen kind of deck there. Tires and some more trash. It almost looks like a door right there too. Good thing is we're farther away from the traffic, so it's much more quieter up here. And this was a recently used trail. I see some relatively fresh ATV tracks. You can see the leaves are kind of ruffled up. But we're not too far away from the area that RJ wants to check out. So once we do arrive there, we'll continue on. But of course, if we do find anything interesting along the way, just like that, we will pop in and share it with you. I do try to make my videos as inclusive as possible and to make you feel like you are here with us. But at the same time, don't want to record every single footstep and every wisp of wind so it's not over the top uh, drawn out. So there's a bottle find. Looks like, a, like an apple juice, possibly. There's a date of 95 on it, I think. 10 cents. Looks like it says 10 cents and then, you know, yeah, maybe. Possibly. They look like an apple juice jar to me, almost. Kind of, yeah. It's kind of coincidental. Off camera, RJ made a comment that it's a good thing we're seeing a lot less trash than we normally would in the Centralia area. Well, we came upon a big dump here. Uh, significant stuff. Um, yeah, it's on both sides, so let's check it out. I see a sneaker. Is there a toy? Yep, there's a there's toy. Oh, yeah, Legos. I see sneakers too. If they're size 13, I'll take them. Power Ranger. But am I glad I wore the shirt today because uh, winner, winner, <laughs> chicken dinner. Blue Power Ranger. I know somebody's probably looking for that. Well, we found it. We'll put it right here in the tree for you. It's going to guard the trail. So I see everything from roofing material to bottles, toothpaste. So, oh, it's actually another toy. Italian dressing bottle. I gotta find out what that other toy is. Oh, look at, look at the head of hair on that one. I don't know who that is. Neither do I. They got a big head of hair, like a purple afro. That's a really unique toy for me to find. That might be a uh, dollar store find. Might be. We'll place them there. Size 12, oh, almost fits me. Got some nature's material growing on them. It's unfortunate to find all this trash, but it does make it rather interesting to kind of search through. But on the other side here, there's actually a lot more. There's like a bottle dump here. Now we come across the bottle dump down by Burnsville, where 61 is rerouted around Graffiti Highway. But they are really old bottles, kind of buried in the ground. These are just dumped here. Somebody likes their rolling rock. Oh, look at this one. Hey, check this out. Rub it, see if the genie comes out. Vino d'Italia. That's actually a neat bottle. Probably had a cork in it. Ice cube juice bottle. Oh, here's the moonshine. Found the moonshine. I don't know anything about bottles, so I can't tell you anything other than that. They look cool. If that was blue, I'd probably be taking it home with me. <laughs> Uncle Fester. <laughs> so as unfortunate as that is, it is something sharing with you guys because it is what we do come across. Not all the time, but at least down in this area, it's not uncommon to come across trash near Centralia. In the town itself, there's a lot of those closed dead-end roads from where the houses used to be. You unfortunately find a lot more trash, not only on the roads, but on the sides of them as well. It's kind of out of control. They even do town cleanups every so often to kind of get it under control. But here, on a rather remote trail, no surprise that we found this, but I think this is probably the coolest find for me. It's like a, like RJ said, a genie bottle, but Vino d'Italia cork top glass bottle. Again, if it was blue, 
I'd be taking this one and that big moonshine one home with me, but we'll leave it here for someone else, I guess. Big, open, cleared out area here. It's rather barren. I'm gonna show you on Google Maps what it looks like. So following that trail led us directly to here. And there's a couple thoughts that are crossing my mind about this area. Number one, it's possibly old, worked or stripped out areas. Number two, which I think there might be more leaning towards number two, is that this might be where the fire was previously burning. This is mostly no, new growth here. It's all new trees, very kind of barren and not very dense, I guess you could say. So it looks like it's an old burned out area where nature is starting to reclaim it now. Don't know for certain, it could be a combination of both, but regardless, it is here in the area and there are trails leading to and from here, but we don't see any evidence of steam or smoke or burned out areas. But it's a big open area kind of in the middle of the mountainside here. So we're gonna now continue behind you guys and make our way down towards Big Mine Run Road and look in those areas that look more promising from earlier to see if we do find any evidence of active burning. So sometimes it pays to go off the beaten trail because the trail continues up that way. And RJ initially wanted to go that way. He said, you know what? Let's get off trail. Let's just go through the forest, the woods, and see what we come across. And it paid off because we've come across several pipes here. There's at least three within eyesight and there may be more. So we're, again, in a good area right now. This is similar to the other one. This is T45. And as we keep going down, there's two more that I see. Now they don't, again, they don't look like vent pipes. They look like the monitoring pipes. But I can't be 100% certain. But there's no other reason that I could assume that they would be back here other than to monitor the heat and the gases. Here's our next one. T15. And this one, maybe T16? I was way off, T46. So these are graphed and numbered somewhere, whether on a paper log or in a computer system for where they're located. But there's a grouping of three right here. And on top of that, these are old material piles from workings known as like, I'm stuck in a tree branch here. <laughs> uh, waste rock material, comb, various stuff that they don't use or sell. So they basically create mounds here. So nine times out of 10, when you see stuff like this, this is man-made from long ago. But we got a lot of ground between here and where we started. So we're just gonna keep going and hopefully we'll continue to be lucky and find more evidence I'm hoping we can at least find at least one or two new vents that we haven't seen before. At the very least, any other findings that we will share on our journey across here. This one is... I don't know. It's like upside down numbers. Let's say S65. That's different from the other ones, but similar to the first one that we saw, they had the cap on it. And right past that, we're picking up another trail here. So it should make our traveling a bit easier. Now it does go down this way. That's going away from where we want to go. Looks like it goes up and there might be an old one here to the right. I think we're going to stay in this direction and that's going to bring us down below where we saw that initial pipe that brought us the, the good news that we we're in the right direction. So I think we're gonna head that direction. So keep coming with us. As we continue down what appeared to be that old road, yet another one. See the markings on this one. S70. This one looks like it's uh, freshly um, rubbed on. Yeah, it looks like they almost took something to it to try to... Copper or silver. This looks like it's pretty shiny 
silver there. I'm guessing that looks like they welded the nut on to be able to help spin the cap off. Yeah. And of course, when you're on a journey or an adventure, you have to admire the beautiful nature and landscape. And right here, another tree, nothing impressive about it, but what's surrounding the base of it definitely is. A combination of rocks, nature's carpet, leaves, and the sun shining on it right now. Just makes for a nice image. So the road we just walked down where the S70 pipe is, stops right here. Looks like that road was created specifically for that pipe. Behind it, it's more raw and natural, but we're still gonna keep heading in this direction because we're going across and down slightly. Well, we covered a lot of ground since the last clip you saw. We walked down this main trail or road, and it looks like it's still actively used by all-terrain vehicles. And it came down to a T, go to the right and to the left, but just off to the right is yet another pipe here. And is there markings on that one? S. S79 right there. So I think what we're gonna do is just search this area a bit more to make sure we didn't don't miss anything before we continue on. That's gonna be going away towards Ashland, I believe. This will be going up closer towards where we're parked and Centralia would be up towards that way. We're getting closer, we can hear vehicles. Right behind me though, I did find just the smallest of stone walls. Kind of surrounding that tree. I don't know what the purpose would be, why it would be right here and how small it is, but it is man-made. Now the road is down there, but we're parked way up there, so we're kind of going diagonally so we're going down and across to hopefully kind of come to uh, close to where we started and actually just spotted another wall up there too almost looks like a you okay it's a little slippery there. gotta get your sea legs yeah. so right around there is remnants of a wall similar to how you would see on a farm like a property divide so that may be what it is. But this looks like it might be an old game trail here, so I'm gonna head in that direction. Update time. We were coming across diagonally, as I explained earlier, and we ended up having to come uphill again on this road that we're on right now because otherwise it was a straight drop off down near the road. And we're also able to see where we started, which is probably about three quarters of a mile in that direction. We went really far off course didn't realize it, and we covered a few miles of zigzagging through the woods. The RJ spotted something really interesting. I'm going to crop it in and show you guys. Right there is a utility pole with some insulators. Now, those are not telegraph ones. Those are utility for electricity. So it's just laying here in the middle of the woods. Most likely it was for the colliery back in the day to supply power to the equipment or the buildings that would have been here back in the day. And as we continue up the road here, we're coming across yet another pipe. Now, if you guys remember earlier when we spotted that first pipe, I'm like, yeah, we'll probably see a few of them. Little did we know we're probably even closing, closing in on 10 or 12 of them. S76. So that's where we just came up we're going to keep going up a bit more even though it's going up higher in elevation it's at least getting us closer to where we started because if we go down here it's pretty much straight beyond this point 
And if we get down to the road, we'd just be walking up the road. We're, at least in the woods here, we're a lot more likely to see some more findings. All right, are you guys keeping count? Because we came upon another pipe. And one thing we've discovered is a lot of these roads and trails and paths that we've been walking are pretty much created for the installation and or monitoring of these pipes. And this is S81, so they're going up in number. 81, the year I was born. That's my pipe, I claim it. So those of you who are watching to this point and are keeping count, feel free to comment down below in the comment section with your guess as to how many pipes we've come across. I'm actually gonna count during editing. At the end of the video, I will put the total number on the screen. The strangest things you find in the woods. And here we go with a toaster oven. Fiesta brand with a hot plate on top. The only thing that's missing is the glass door in the front. And it's just partially buried right there. Next one, directly in line with 81 S82. We missed mine. So we went, jumped from 76 to 81. So there is um, a few that we missed somewhere, but they are going in numerical order. Now keep our eyes peeled. No new vents, but more than enough pipes. This kind of goes to show you the extent they went to <clears throat> back in the day to monitor this mine fire. Whether or not it burned under here before or is possibly headed in this direction, that's up for debate. But regardless, they have been placed back here from far away to nearby. Well, RJ told me to keep my eyes peeled and I did, and I found him some souvenirs. I found some downed insulators. And these are, as you can see, much bigger than the telegraph ones that we usually find, like the clear green ones. These are for electricity. Yeah. That one that one's running away. is in perfect condition. That one's this bracket. one's on a bracket, but it's partially broken. But it's on the original bracket. And the pole it came from is right there, that circular right there, it's cut. So they cut it and it toppled and they were laying here until I found them. Another tree defying gravity here growing off the embankment. Roots are completely exposed and it's uh, almost like a spider web of tree roots. And it's sprouted up into three different trees. But down here we have another pipe. This is not the one we found before, but similar to the first one. Oh yeah, it opens up its wires and a connector. So that is what they would plug in their meter or device to to get the readings. And it's 100% intact. So we're going to put it back in there to keep it protected. Very neat. No number on this pipe, but still keep count. It does say New Haven, Connecticut, 4 inch. OEM. This might have been the one that Jake found Yeah, possibly. So what you're looking at right now is a big open area down below. And it's very familiar, at least to us, but those of you who have watched my prior videos, it'll look familiar as well because when Adam gave his tours here, we actually covered this area and walked all the way back to where we found that garbage dump and the pickup truck that was looking kind of suspicious at the time so we know where we're at and we came upon another pipe no cap on it so we haven't seen this one yet is there yeah i actually see this thing coming out holy crap yeah, I see it now too. oh yeah that's hot grab your uh, temperature down all right, so this pipe here is the most unique of them all because not only is it open on top, it's a testing pipe, but there's actually steam actively coming out of it. 
So we're in the area where the fire is still burning and this is the reason these pipes were put in here to confirm that. Although the testing portion of it is no longer, as you can say, active or used, it is spewing steam out the cracks of it. There's a number on it, number that two, yep, number two. Three. And we're gonna do a reading on it. So ambient air temperature is, boy, it's really warm out, 67 degrees. Oh, you're at the top of that. Oh, yep. I had 55. Okay, so yeah, we're 60 degrees. And we're gonna come over and we're at 100 instantly. And if we can get down into it, 109, 110, 13, 14, 16, 18. Yeah, we're climbing 127. Yeah, it's climbing. So it's uh, significantly hotter if you leave it there and the heat's rising. It's probably not 100% accurate because of the heat running into the sensor, but regardless, it's also warm to the touch too. And not sure if you guys could see it, but there is steam coming out now. With the ambient air temperature being as warm as it, as it is, it's not very visible. I can see it right here. But if we were here on a cold day, this would be a cloud of steam. Stand on this side. The sun. The sun. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's a perfect shot. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so that is some pretty neat evidence. So we can confirm the fire's still burning, but it hasn't moved a whole lot from what we discovered. But this is a great finding. Uh, we have come full circle because we are back at the upper Fisher steam vent that we checked out earlier that goes straight down. And the first pipe we checked is over there. So we have covered a lot of terrain and have basically scoured this area top to bottom. So I'm going to safely make my way down lower and share a few things with you. Although it's a warmer day, the steam is still rising. And right below me here is the same mine vent where we cooked our lunch. So we are back to our starting location. <clears throat> I mean, there is the steam vent where we cooked our lunch a few years ago and where there's some other active vents. And little do we know is just up above that is where that pipe is that's spewing out steam right now. So a couple of things I do want to share is that number one, I, wanted, I do want to thank Adam for giving us the information to come out here because he told us about this a few years ago and just got kind of pushed to the, the back burner and we finally made out here today to confirm whether or not the fire is burning up on top of the mountain. From what we've seen, there's no clear evidence of that. What we did find out though, is that much further down, closer to Ashland, there's many more vent or monitoring pipes. So I don't know if those are precautionary to make sure it's not going that direction, or that's where it's burned previously. What we do know though, it's burning right here still. Not as hot as it was when we first discovered it a few years ago, but regardless, it's still burning here. And there are projections as to which direction it's heading. People have reported that Ashland is next on the map to eventually be eminent domain like Centralia. 
I don't know if that's going to happen or not, but it is reported that there is at least enough fuel, enough coal to burn for at least another one to 200 years. But today was confirmation that the fire is no longer under Centralia and that it is on the outskirts, but closer to Ashland right now. And although this is the main source of venting right here within a little square area, further out, we didn't find anything at all, except for that one barren area that RJ wanted to explore. It's rather bare and looks like all new growth. Can't confirm or deny if that is mine burned land, but it's not out of the question. With that being said though, right now on the screen, I'm gonna put the total number of pipes that we found. And if you are correct or at least close, then good job for counting and sticking along to find out the total number of mine vent pipes. And if you haven't seen my Laurel Run Mine Fire video, I highly encourage you to watch it because it goes back to 1915. And when the town became evacuated and demolished is when this fire started here. So they overlap a little bit of time. Also, I'm in the process right now. I'm doing some research. I'm gonna be picking up a new tool, a new piece of equipment that's gonna help with these types of locations with heat sources. So stay tuned for that. I'll be returning here and to Laurel Run Mine Fire to test it out and give you a new view, new, different look in how we can spot these underground mine fires. Anyways, guys, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to RJ70 Productions for joining me as well. Make sure to check out his video to see his view and take on our adventure today. And you never know where you'll see us next. So thanks once again, everyone. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.